welcome. This lesson is all about chordal harmony. Chordal harmony refers to chords that are built from notes that are stacked in fourths instead of thirds. You might want to explore chordal chords because, well, besides the fact that they sound really awesome, they sound less traditional than our typical chords that we play with, and that can be really refreshing sometimes. Also, they are the perfect type of chord structure to use if you are jamming in a modal context. And we'll talk all about what that means in just a minute, as well as several other applications for how to use chordal harmony and chordal chords on the guitar. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com, and on this channel, I help guitarists like you expand your theory knowledge, your technique, and your fretboard mastery so you can create freely. I have new lesson videos out every week, so if you're new here, please subscribe. I'm going to define chordal harmony, show you one of the most famous examples of it being used in real music, and then I'll show you several applications for how you can start working on it and playing around with it on the guitar. Whether you're interested in composing or improvising or just exploring some new sounds while mapping out the fretboard, this will be super fun and useful. This lesson is the 24th video in a chord and harmony music theory series for guitarists that goes from beginner to advanced. Every lesson in this series totally stands on its own while also building on the previous material. There's a link in the description to a playlist of the full series. So what is chordal harmony? What are chordal chords? Well, the typical chords that we usually think of and use are called tertiary chords, and those are chords that are built with intervals of stacked thirds. I did a thorough video on how seventh chords are built using tertiary harmony earlier in this series. Check out that video if you need to. Chordal harmony is chords being built with stacked fourths instead of stacked thirds. So we can use the same way that we build chords usually, just instead of taking one, three, and five of a scale to build the first chord from that scale, we would take one, four, and seven and put those notes together as a chord, and then we would do that off of every note of the scale. If we build tertiary triads through the scale of C major along the fifth, fourth, and third strings of the guitar, we get this. Sounds familiar. If we build three note chordal chords through the scale of C major along the same three strings, we get this. Those are three note chordal chords, but you can keep stacking them. So here's what it sounds like if we do four note chordal chords through the scale of C major along the middle four strings. typical tertiary harmony, this sounds pretty out there, doesn't it? Well, it's actually part of a totally different language of harmony. It's not part of functional harmony, which I did a video on last week. Instead, it's often used in the context of what's called modal harmony. Functional harmony and modal harmony can definitely coexist. They can overlap and kind of borrow from each other, and we'll talk about how in just a little bit, but, but they're really totally different sounds. So what is modal harmony? In modal harmony, there is a tonal center. There's a root of a scale that is the tonal center, but other than that, all of the other notes of the scale are considered equal. And therefore, all of the chords that can be made out of that mode or scale are also considered equal. So the sounds that come from modal harmony don't function in any particular way. They don't want to resolve anywhere specific. They don't imply any sort of motion or movement harmonically. Modal harmony is a static sound. Everything is just kind of floating there. And that's why it's jam out of heaven. You can just jam and jam and jam and jam and jam and not worry about getting lost or hitting the right notes because there's no harmonic motion going on that you need to be following or be aware of or be targeting. Because modal harmony just has a root center and then every other note is equal, if we use tertiary chords built in thirds in that context, it can sound like we're starting to use a little bit of functional harmony in there. But chordal chords keep the sound really nebulous and really neutral, and that's why they are so perfect for that context. So tertiary chords and functional harmony were the predominant sounds in Western classical music through the 19th century. But in the 20th century, some composers like Stravinsky, Ravel, Debussy, uh, Schoenberg, and many others 
started experimenting with chordal harmony. They started stacking voices in fourths instead of thirds in an effort to get away from making their music sound like it has a traditional key center. This created much more open, much more ambiguous, and much more dissonant sounds. One of the most famous examples of chordal harmony being used in real music is on Miles Davis's song So What from his 1959 album called Kind of Blue, and this sound became known as modal jazz. The song So What is in D Dorian, mostly, and if you're not sure what I mean by Dorian, check out my playlist on modes. Playing in D Dorian means that D is the tonal center as the root, and then every other note from the scale of D Dorian is equally fair game to be used and improvised with. There aren't any particular notes that carry more weight or importance than anything else other than that root. The signature chords that the pianist Bill Evans played in between the melody phrases in the song So What, those are chordal chords. <laughs> This is sometimes called the so what chord. It's a stack of four notes separated by fourths and then a major third interval on top. So it's not purely chordal, but that's okay. And we're gonna talk about inverting chordal chords in a minute here, but check this out. If we take the top note of that voicing on the high E string and we move it down to the low E string on the same fret, which is the same note, we actually get five notes in a row that are all separated by perfect fourths, a five note chordal chord. So if you are playing in D Dorian on this song, you can play any of the chordal chords that come out of that scale. A very common and useful way to do this on the guitar is to map out your three note chordal chords along the second, third, and fourth strings of the guitar. So here are the chord shapes along those three strings from the scale of D Dorian. <laughs> So now you can improvise with any of those shapes. You can use them as accompaniment. If someone's playing lead, then you play. You can use them as thinking of the top note of the shapes as being part of the melody. Mapping out melodies that way, or you can use them and arpeggiate them as really interesting melodic lines. Now, if you look up this song, so what, you, if you find a lead sheet of it, you'll most likely see the chord symbol D minor 11 written out for 16 bars in a row to play over this song. That's because the language of functional harmony and tertiary chords, uh, where we use chord symbols, that D minor 11 is the closest thing we can get to expressing a Dorian modal harmony sound using a chord symbol. Here's why. If we take a normal D minor 7 chord, and then we find the 5, and we replace it with the 11, and the 11 is the same as 4, so it's going to be a whole step away from the 5. If you're interested in learning more about extensions, check out my two videos about the theory of extensions and then extensions on jazz chords. But if we do that, then we get this chord shape, which, as you can see, is one of our stacked perfect fourths chordal chord shapes. So when playing modally, it would be a little more accurate to just say that you're playing in D Dorian rather than playing over the chord D minor 11. But this brings up my next segment, which is how chordal harmony can be used in the context of regular functional harmony and over tertiary chords and how we can use that interesting chordal modern sound over what we think of as more normal and typical chords. So if you want to use chordal chords in non-modal music to make it sound more modern or, or just different, one of my favorite ways to do this is to harmonize the pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale, with chordal chord shapes when playing over a minor chord. So let's say we're playing over an E minor chord or an E minor 7 chord. Of course the go-to way to improvise over that would be with your minor pentatonic scale. Well, let's find the E minor pentatonic scale along the second string. Now let's harmonize that with two fourth intervals below 
each of the notes of the scale, it's gonna end up being just the same shape every time. <laughs> You can see in the diagram that there's a natural six that shows up when we do this, which basically means that we're treating the minor chord as if it's coming from Dorian. And that's totally okay, even if it's on a chord that is not officially Dorian, that's okay, we can still do this. Now you can use those chord shapes along those three strings to play over an E minor chord. Um, I'll demonstrate and I'll just play a low E in the bass so we can hear the uh, kind of drone or pedal point of the root of the chord down there. You can also use that same shape to connect chromatically between two of the other shapes that are from the scale, and that includes the blues note. So that would be the, the blues note harmonized with the same shape. And we already talked about how you can use those shapes to arpeggiate them melodically. And of course you can do this over any minor chord. So if I moved all of that around and did it over an A minor chord, it would sound like this. So that's a way to take normal Tertian chords and play over them in a way that sounds a little less traditional and borrowing from this modal and quartal sound. And of course you can do this over other chord types as well. If you wanted to play with quartal shapes over like a G7 chord, well you'd have to map out what the quartal shapes are from the scale that that chord comes from, which is C major in this case, and then you can play around with them in that same way. I did a video recently on rootless chords and we saw how any one chord shape can be interpreted or used as many, many other types of chords depending on where you're thinking of the root. Well, this chord shape that we're using here, this three note quartal chord shape is super wide open in terms of how it can be used over non quartal chords. Let's go through and see how many tertiary chords this quartal chord shape can be used over if we change around where we're thinking of the root. Well, if this is the root, it's minor 11. We saw that uh, just a bit ago, if that's the root. If the if this note on the fourth fret is the root, then it's a D flat major seven sharp 11 chord. If this is the root, then it's a C sus four chord. If this is the root, then it's B flat six nine. The structure on the top is staying the same the whole time. If this is the root, then it's A flat major 13. And if this is the root, it's G seven sus four, or it could be G minor 11. And if this is the root, it would be F sus2. And if this is the root, then it's E flat 6 9. What we did right there actually would sound pretty cool as, as a chord progression if we wanted to turn it into a real music idea for us. shows how this quartal chord structure is perfect in a modal context where you actually don't want it to sound like anything specific. Again, if you want to see more examples of what we just did there, but with more typical chord shapes, check out my rootless voicings video. Now, one more thing, and this is super cool. You don't want to miss this part. Let's go back to that um, playing over an E minor chord with the quartal shape, how we harmonized the minor pentatonic scale with it. And let's take that quartal chord shape and let's invert it to get some additional interesting sounds. So let's take the bottom note of this shape and let's move it up an octave over here. I did two videos on how to move chords around in this way and learning all your octave shapes and seriously mapping out the fretboard. Those are really good if you don't have those shapes down and how to move notes around to make new chord voicings, check those videos out. So when we do that, now we have a new shape. It's not a quartal chord shape anymore. It's a new shape, but it is the exact same notes. So therefore it can be used in the exact same way. So now we'll take this new shape and we'll play it still following the E minor pentatonic scale along the second string, which is the middle note of the shape. beautiful 
final sound with a whole step interval on the top. Let's jam with it just a little bit to hear that root sound underneath. Let's go back to that original shape, and now we can also invert it the other way, where we take the top note, and we bring it down an octave, and we get another new shape. And now we're gonna follow the E minor pentatonic scale along the fifth string. I really like this one. Let's jam with it just a little bit as well. If you want some additional advice on jamming with the pentatonic scale, grab my free PDF of the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns for learning how to improvise more melodically and more tastefully. Just go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns, or use the link in the description. It's a simple little sheet with tab and notation with three exercises that can make all the difference in helping improvisations and solos sound less like scales and more like melodies. That's it for this lesson on chordal harmony. I hope you found it useful. If so, please hit that thumbs up. That really helps the channel out and it helps other people find this lesson who might be interested in learning this information as well. Next week's lesson is on chord melodies, harmonizing melodies with chords. This is one of the coolest and kind of elusive guitar techniques that is out there. It's gonna be a fun one. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and happy practicing.